So hello everyone. Um, today we're going to embark on a journey that explores the intersection of science communication and space exploration. A journey where we'll see how telling the right stories can propel us to the stars. We'll touch on astrobiology, planetary protection, analog missions, and some emerging trends in the field. Now, whether you're a seasoned space scientist or just curious about what lies beyond our planet, there's something here for you. Ready for a liftoff? Let's dive in. So let's start with why science communication is so crucial in space exploration. Now I would like you to imagine space exploration as a rocket. The science and technology are the rocket's engines, powerful and complex, but without fuel, that rocket isn't going anywhere. The science communication is that fuel. It energizes public support, secures funding, and fosters global collaboration. The science communication serves as a bridge between the scientific community and the public, policymakers, and even other scientists from different disciplines. You know, it takes the raw power of scientific discovery and translates it into something, uh, you know, that helps people connect. Now, space exploration is inherently interdisciplinary, requiring, you know, different kinds of collaboration of experts from fields like geology, biology, engineering, computer science. Science communication acts as the glue that binds these disciplines together. And you know, it ensures that the ideas and discoveries are shared across all of these fields. Effective communication here fosters an environment where scientists can build on each other's work. They can innovate at the intersections of disciplines and tackle different complex challenges of space exploration. Um, an example would be the integration of AI in space missions, uh, which is a di direct result of effective communication between computer scientists and mission planners, leading to more autonomous and efficient spacecrafts. So astrobiology is the study of life beyond our planet. It captures the imagination like no other field. I mean, I think almost all of us have, you know, at some point discussed about the existence of aliens. There's so much surrounding it. You know, we have so many movies. But it's not just about asking if we're alone in the universe. It's about the rigorous scientific methods we use to answer this question. The science communication and astrobiology has been instrumental in changing public fascination into tangible support for missions like uh, the Mars Perseverance mission and the upcoming missions to the moons of Jupiter. Now consider the hunt for biosignatures in places like Mars or the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn. These missions are about searching for evidence that could fundamentally change our understanding of life. But here's where science communication steps in. How do we explain the significance of finding or not finding life? How do we make the public appreciate that even a negative result in the search of life can be a huge step forward in science? You know, it's all about framing the story, showing that every discovery, big or small, brings us closer to answering these big questions. So next we have planetary protection. You know, a field that sounds straight out of a sci-fi movie. When I first heard about it, I wasn't even sure if it's actually a real field but it's very real and very important. Planetary protection is one of the most ethically charged fields in space exploration. It involves uh, you know, the contamination of other planets with Earth-based organisms and vice versa, so forward and backward contamination. Science communication plays a crucial role here by explaining why stringent measures such as sterilizing spacecraft or implementing quarantine procedures are essential. And through, through clear and transparent communication, scientists can demystify these protocols, making them understandable to the public and even to the policymakers alike. So this understanding, uh, it fosters more support, ensuring that exploration is conducted responsibly. Now, next we have analog missions. So analog missions simulate the conditions of space on Earth, allowing us to test technologies, train astronauts, 
simulate the entire environment of you know, certain geographies and study human behavior in these isolated environments. So locations like the desert of Utah, the volcanic uh, landscapes in Hawaii, they're, they're some of the incredible analog sites that we have. Um, communicating the purpose and outcomes of these missions is crucial. The science communicators share these simulations with the public. They show how they contribute to the safety and success of future space missions. And by highlighting the challenges faced and the solutions developed, they help build a narrative that keeps the public interest alive and encourages continued investment in these essential preparatory activities. An example could be how we used to have so many, uh, you know, analog sites and now we also have NASA participating uh, into these. So science communication is also driving some of the biggest trends in space exploration today. Uh, take citizen science, for example. We have citizen scientists flying to space uh, at this moment. Projects like Zuni versus Planet Hunters allow everyday people to participate in real scientific research. The, the, so the democratization of science not only speeds up the research process, but also builds a community of engaged and informed space enthusiasts. Then there's the rise of private space companies like um, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and their success isn't just due to their engineering feats. It's also because they've mastered the art of storytelling. They've made space exploration exciting and accessible, framing it as the next big adventure for humanity. So whether it's live streaming rocket launches or tweeting from space, these companies are using science communication to engage public, to build public excitement and get more momentum for space exploration. Now space is a visual medium and visuals are a powerful tool in science communication. Think about the iconic images from the Hubble Space Telescope and you know, the first images from the James, James Webb Space Telescope. You know, when we got these, the entire internet was on fire. These visuals do more than just uh, look impressive. They help us grasp the scale and the beauty of the universe. But beyond just pretty pictures, visuals like um, infographics and animations help break down complex scientific concepts into something understandable. So imagine trying to explain the formation of a black hole with just words. It's really difficult, especially if you're explaining it to you know, someone who does not know much about them. But with a well-crafted animation, you can show the process in a way that makes sense to everyone, even to school kids and even to um, seasoned scientists. So one of the most important aspects of science communication is education and outreach. The future of space exploration depends on the next generation. Today's students who will become tomorrow's astronauts, engineers, and scientists. So programs like Space Camp are crucial for sparking interest uh, in space from a young age. But it's not just about inspiring kids, it's about making space science accessible to everyone, whether through school programs, public lectures, online lectures, science communication is about breaking down barriers and showing that space exploration is something we can all be a part of. And who knows, the next person to walk on Mars, you know, they might be inspired by some documentary on YouTube. The space exploration is a global endeavor with international partnerships playing a critical role in missions like the ISS, and um, you know we have so many upcoming uh, lunar initiatives. Science communication is the key to fostering these global collaborations by promoting transparency, sharing knowledge, and building trust among nations. Through international conferences, joint publications, and global outreach programs, uh, science communication ensures that space exploration remains a collaborative effort. It not only highlights the shared goals, but also the mutual benefits of exploration, encouraging countries to work together in the spirit of discovery rather than competition. And when different agencies work together on a mission, science communication helps ensure that everyone's contributions are recognized, they're understood, fostering a sense of global unity. It's more than just sharing data, it's about sharing the excitement and the challenges and making sure that the story of space exploration 
is one that includes all of humanity. As we look to the future, so whether is the colonization of Mars um, or the development of space tourism, the role of science communication is only going to grow in importance. It will be cru crucial in addressing the uh, social, scientific, ethical questions that arise as we push the boundaries of human presence in space. The science communication will continue to inspire, to educate, to engage the global community, ensuring that space exploration remains a priority and that its benefits are shared by all. By effectively communicating the wonders and the challenges of space, we not only secure the future of exploration, but also create a more informed and united world ready to face the stars together. Um, to conclude, science communication isn't just about explaining what we're doing in space, it's about making sure that everyone feels like they're part of this incredible journey, whether through storytelling, visuals, or education. It's how we connect the science of space with the hearts and the minds of people. The cosmos is vast, it's full of wonders, it's ever expanding, and with the right stories, we can bring the excitement home. Thank you for joining me uh, in exploring today. You know, let's keep this up together. Fantastical, uh, wonderful job, Tapas Sweeney. That was awesome. I'm so glad your power held out and your talk was incredible. I see we already have one question from Tomas coming in. Yes, thank you so much. Great talk. Uh, very well said. Uh, first a question, uh, would you mind if I share it on a Polish astrobiology website uh, on a bar where we talk about uh, the science outreach? That would be nice if we could. Uh, that's a question to organizers too. And, and I want to comment because I recently heard an interesting interview with uh, Mary Wojtek, the director of NASA astrobiology program. Uh, I liked very much, as you said, that uh, we have to frame the story to, so that uh, everyone knows that every discovery, more or less uh, big or small, is all important. And what she brought to my attention is that uh, we as astrobiologists, we carry a lot of responsibility to make the public still interested in the discovery and don't bore them with overblown uh, Mm, this, uh, headlines like oh life on mars discovered maybe because this is not going to be the discovering of life is not going to be so digital it's not going to be there is life or there is not it's a journey of discovery and we're taking the public with us on this journey and uh, yeah so that's an open question to everyone how can we like counterbalance because there is this a lot of uh click bites and big headlines because that's how the journalism works and then how do we counterbalance it and not get people bored with the uh, you know, overblown announcements? So I, I love your question, you know, and, and your and excitement, you know, it oozes out of everything you've shared just now. Uh, for me personally, when I do read some news, I I go to Google, you know, I, I do a, a, a bit of search, I check the information, but then I go to these trusted sources, which I have, so like the specific outlets, and, you know, I wait for them to make some kind of a comment. So I know that, you know, whatever I'm being excited for, it does not get into win because, uh, you know, I can agree that, you know, sometimes we get some news and we're like, oh my gosh, is this really happening? And, mm -hmm. you know, we're so excited for the entire day. And by the end of the day, we're like, okay, so, you know, this was not exactly what we were expecting. And no. um, so I just think Google is the answer. Yeah, and, and maybe writing comments. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, Sanjoy, is it a quick question? Oh, you're, you're on mute. Oh, it's, sorry. It's, this is just a quick comment. Tapasweeni, this is one of the best talk I've seen and I've heard regarding the need and value of science communication. And you're talking about Thomas's enthusiasm. I could sense yours oozing out of the presentation as well. It's a very, very nice presentation. Good job. Thank you so much. That that means a lot to me. Um, I, you know, I, I was really excited when we were doing this. In fact, throughout the um, 
YSP uh, journey. It has been so incredible. And, uh, you know, I'd like to thank uh, both of you for being the incredible mentors you are. That's why we've all been so excited. And uh, even as I was making the presentation, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much to share. And it's like, okay, we have to cut back, but, you know, let's get as much as possible. But I really appreciate the feedback. Thank you so much.